Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to diagnose some of the challenges that I had with my solo shot during last week's surf session. Now, if you've seen that edit, you'll know that I was frustrated because I lost about 70% of my video due to some tracking issues that occurred early on in both the morning and again in the PM session. Now, I will say customer service at Solo Shot is excellent. Shout out to Jason, who's helped me in the past with some of the RC plane challenges and is currently helping me with this to diagnose the tag, to look at the footage, and to help get an idea of what's going on here. Now, the long and short of it is, there's about one-third blame on human error, one-third blame on Solo Shot, and then one-third blame, I guess you could say, on the technology that is used in this product and some of the limitations. To that last point, this runs on a 2.4 gigahertz wireless frequency between the tag and the docking base. This is the same stuff I use for my remote control, and it does have limitations in that water absorbs these radio waves, and when you have it low down at the water's level with big waves like this, you will see some radio frequency interference, which will shorten and significantly reduce the overall range of the tag and the docking station. So let's take a minute and talk about the human error part. Now, Solo Shot originally required you to run around in front of the camera to make sure that the tracking was locked before you went out on your session. Now, I do have the correct updated software on my system. However, this process of running around in front of the camera is no longer the correct procedure. The recommended procedure is to now take your solo shot down to the water's edge and turn it on there, leave the tag on the base, and go ahead and get the tracking all calibrated. Then take the tag out and move the camera up to where you're going to film. Now this becomes significant, especially in, in the afternoon here where you can see I'm out and it's low tide. The camera, because it's up on the dune, is now six to eight feet higher than it was in the morning and apparently this creates some issues. I spent a lot of time walking around in the afternoon because I was getting a very weak green light and it just never seemed to track on me correctly and most likely this was my error and not following the new procedure. Now Solo Shot itself does occasionally kind of go off on its own and this is a good example here of where it seems the motion detection has overridden the tracking. As I pull out of the back of the wave it does block the tag from the camera and then the motion detection carries the video further down to follow the wave. But unfortunately it never resynced, so there's still some areas of improvement there. Now the last little bit that I'll put in here is this extremely jerky motion. And this is what I referred to as the third issue, which is a limitation of technology. Jason at Solo Shot said I was over 250 meters out on this bar, and as you can also see the camera is at a significant angle. So because of limitations here, the only thing I can recommend is to make sure and take your solo shot down to the bar that you will be surfing or the point or whatever it is, and then go back up to where you paddle out or have your home base. That way there's the, you'll maximize or minimize the range distance from the tag and the camera. Now hopefully this has been helpful. We'll see how it all practically comes together in future edits, and we'll see you out in the water. 